Well, friends, it's March 2022. And if you're watching this video in March 2022, um, the FCC just announced that it is going to start collecting fees for amateur radio licenses. And it's going to change the fee for personal licenses. So this is going to happen on April 19th, as I mentioned in the earlier short video. Now, the, back, the background for this is, of course, that the FCC, through the Ray Baums Act, which was signed by President Trump in, I believe it was 2017, it was designed to bring user fees for all of these licenses so that they would cover the cost of data storage or IT services. Initially, the fee was $50, but the ARRL and a few others made an issue of that. And then the FCC said, you know what? Okay, we're gonna make it 35. 35 is still not zero, but 35 is not 50. And this kind of makes it to a fee for an amateur radio license being $35 every 10 years because you have to renew the license every 10 years or $3.50 a year. So let's talk a little bit about what this means for amateur radio. And we're also going to talk about what this means for GMRS because this actually has the effect of lowering the fee for GMRS. So I'll start with the public notice. So the public notice is DA 22-307, released on March 23, 2022. Effective date of new application fees for the Wireless Telecommunications Bureau, MD Docket 20-270. Notice this was from 2020, so it took a while. On December 23rd, 2020, the commission adopted a report and order implementing a new application fee schedule which significantly updated the commission's previous fee schedule. As indicated in the 2020 application fee report and order, the new application fee rates will become effective when the commission's information technology systems and internal procedures have been updated and the commission publishes notices in the Fred Federal Register announcing the effective date of such rules. Next, they're gonna cover themselves. I said on July 26, 2021, the commission announced the new application fee rates for the Office of Engineering Technology and the Media Bureau would become effective July 15, 2021. And on December 15, 2021, the commission announced the new application fee rates for the Wireless Competition Bureau, the Enforcement Bureau, and the International Bureau. The Kalia petitions would become effective on December 15, 2021. The, this public notice announces the new application fee rates for the Wireless Telecommunications Bureau, codified at 47 CFR 1.1102, will become effective on April 19, 2022. Okay? Um, so wireless application fees can be paid through the Commission's universal licensing system. And they give you a website for further guidance regarding wireless telecommunications bureau application fees please refer to wireless telecommunications bureau fee filing guideline located at and they give you a website again so how does this work so generally what is going to happen is that for new licenses you are going to sign up for a ve exam at a local testing center and these are run by volunteers and these volunteers either administer the exams in person or virtually over the internet. When you take the exam, it's going to send it to the FCC. The FCC will then kick an email to you saying your application is being processed. Pay this fee to continue. Okay. What happened is that the FCC must have your email address on file. And they actually made this requirement back in, um, formal finalized in 2021 so every new applicant must have an email address on file with the fcc okay they don't want to deal in paper anymore they want to deal only with electronic applications now so they're taking a the payment when you pay that fee they will continue the processing and then you will get your license via email and or it and will appear in the database and then you can operate the 
other um, things you need to worry about are renewal. When you go to renew, you will go on the FCC website and then you will be able to submit your application and then pay the fee right then and there. It is just like when you apply for a GMRS license, you do the application and then it will prompt you to pay the fee. If you apply for a vanity call, same thing. As a matter of fact, you used to have to pay a fee for vanity calls that was rescinded. And then this is going to come straight back. Now I paid $20 for my vanity back in the day. So that's, that's how it's going to affect us. Um, the good news for GMRS people is that if all you ever wanted was the GMRS license, if all you ever wanted was radios to talk with your overlanding buddies out in the woods and you and, you know, not a Rubicon and all the other GMRS heads are out there and in, um, in the, in the desert and BLM land with your Jeeps and your Bufwangs and all these other radios. Well, all you need to do is pay the FCC $35. Of course, I assume you want to operate legally, which is quite an assumption these days. So that is um, how it's going to work. The pros. The pros, I think, will be that, you know, $35 is not the end of the world. I think $35 is going to be a reasonable fee that will be every 10 years. However, I still wish it was zero because... You know, there's so much that radio amateurs do for the public good. And I really think that eventually we should ask the FCC to reconsider this fee because, I mean, to be honest, you know, we help out so much and we're a vehicle for young people to learn about STEM and we have so much international goodwill. I mean, come on, you know, that's one thing. But um, and then consider, you know, the, the airwaves being like the national parks and amateur radio is, is like the national parks, you know? So I still do not like this fee. I do not, I do not support this fee. At the same time, it's not the end of the world. It's $3 and 50 cents a year. And it's, you know, it's affordable for most people. Okay. GMRS folks, you know, yeah, it's $35. It used to be 70 for you guys. Okay. So, Congratulations, you get $35. The FCC is going to have a meeting with volunteer examiners, okay? And the FCC is going to discuss implementation. <laughs> right now, there is no way for the VEs to collect the fee directly. They're not going to. So that means if somebody brings $35 in cash to a VE session, they're not going to collect the fee. This could change, okay? But as of now, no. You have to pay the fee to the FCC directly. The FCC, I believe, takes checks as well. They prefer credit card payments, but they have a bank where they take checks as well too. So I'm not so sure that's gonna work out the way it, it, it did. And other than that, I mean, nothing really changes. You still have the same privileges. There's not going to be any more enforcement. Yes, I know people are saying they wish this money would be spent on enforcement. No, the FCC is not, is not using this money for enforcement. What they're doing is that they're using this money to, to statutorily cover the costs of their IT and administration. And that's it. You know, they're paying for computers, they're paying for programming, they're paying for something. They're not paying for another Riley Hollingsworth, right? Now, the AWRL is involved in an enforcement effort with an MOU from the FCC, which means that the AWRL is taking reports and will gather information and will then forward that to the FCC for enforcement. By and large, I don't think the FCC really cares what goes on in the handbands because it doesn't really affect anybody else. So, you know, I don't think they're going to spend a lot of time and money on enforcement. Anyway, it's just a thought. Um, good luck. Uh, my, my license runs out in 2027. I'm, of course, going to renew, provide I still have health and strength. Thank you, God. And um, I will, you know... If the fee is still around then, sure, I'll be I'll be paying it and renewing it. 
um, you do not have to pay the fee for address changes or name changes. So if you moved or if, or ladies, if you get married, you know, and you change your name or you otherwise change your name, you don't have to pay a fee, you know? So that's it. Anyway, I wish I had better news, but you know what? Them's the breaks. Peace in 73.